Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Raids and today I'm going to be talking about British mystery recommendations or suggestions. So I'm not calling this exactly recommendations though there are some on here that I would recommend because I've read them but there are a few on here that I haven't read and everything but um, when it comes to British mysteries I had more of a chance of recommending books that I enjoy because I read a lot of British mysteries <laughs> especially historical mysteries and everything so any of the historical mysteries that you've seen me talk about on the uh, recommendations for like the fancy dress like uh, Macy Dobbs and everything would probably work for this one too if you want to double up but I do have some other books. So I do have uh, D.I. Nikki Galena by Joy Ellis. The first book is Crime on the Fins. Um, I really enjoyed this series. It's a little darker and everything, but it's a British mystery. And a lot of times, like, their more contemporary ones are a little darker and everything. But I've really enjoyed this series and remembering this series. And the fact that I haven't finished the series makes me want to put this one on my list. So I may get... Uh, one of these books on my list. Um, I think I have read at least the first six in the series. But yeah, I really liked um, D.I. Nikki Galena and so I suggest that you know, if you like a little bit of a darker British mystery that you would give it a try. And the next one I have is um, Inspector Lindley series um, by Elizabeth George. This is A Great Deliverance. It's the first book I've read the first two books in this series, so I got a long ways to go, because I think there's like 20. It is something that I've just recently started reading, but I have watched the television show that is based on it. I love the television show. Nathaniel Parker is like one of my favorite <laughs> actors, and so yeah. So I was wanting to read the like source material, so I'm, ge I'm getting through it a little bit at a time, and I've been collecting the books. I have like a huge chunk. I would like to find this one in like the hardback to go with the rest of my books but I have this one for now but yeah I like that one and so I would suggest that one um Adam Dalgleish by P.D. James the first book is Cover Her Face which I've heard is not like the best one in the series I, it's the only one I have read and I thought it was okay and I give it like three stars but I've heard a lot of good things about this one and I do know that there is a TV series I think on either Acorn or Britbox I don't remember and I have watched it and so it has me a little bit more interested in trying another one and so I just thought I would throw this one on here because PD James is a little bit of an is older works because I think um, might be from the 80s just like this one I think has started in the 80s to give people a little bit of a variety of instead of not just newer stuff and everything so I wanted to put that one on here the same with Lord Peter Whimsey by Dorothy L Sayer in case we have some people that want to read like some older books that whose body is the first book in this series um, I know some people are a little hit or miss with Lord Peter Whimsey I thought the first book was just fine and it is another series of course that I need to read more of because I've only read the first book um, one of my favorite television shows that I am kind of aggravated myself for not making more time for to read the books and that's the Tony Hill and Carol Jordan series by Val McDermott. I've watched the uh, Wired in the Blood series and I absolutely love that series and I've only read two books in the series so far but again I have collected a lot of the books in hardback and everything but uh, yeah. So I need to get to book three because I have read the first two books, which the first one is The Mermaid Sings and then the second one is Wired in the Blood. But yeah, so definitely might see the third one on my TBR, you know, spoilers. <laughs> but uh, these are a little dark too, so, uh, you know, take that as it is. Um, Tony Hill is a uh, criminal psychologist and he gets into the mind of the killers and that's how he solves things. And sometimes he gets really in there and so it can get a little bit dark and some things that happen to him can get a little bit out there too because he has killers after him and things like that and especially in this one and Carol Jordan is a detective inspector that 
works with him a lot and everything, so yeah, I really like this series. The next one I have is, is the Inspector Rebus series by Ian Rankin. The first book is Knots and Crosses. I have read Knots and Crosses a long time ago, and then I just never reached for another one. This is just another series that got lost in all the other series that I need to go back and read the first book and then continue on with the series because I would like to continue on with the series. And so I don't know necessarily a lot about it, but I wanted to mention it because um, I think it is a series that a lot of people have enjoyed and I know I've heard of Ian Rankin and I think a lot of other people have probably heard of that name and so thought I'd throw it out there that the Inspector Rebus series. And then I have Barker and Llewellyn by Will Thomas. This is a um, mystery, a historical mystery series. It's a duo. Um, the first book is Some Danger Involved. I have read the first four books in this series and I really need to get back to it. And and so we have um, this one set in Victorian London so uh, maybe if you want something that's not always set in more like a Regency era we have a Victorian setting and it's detective Cyrus Barker and his apprentice Tom Thomas Llewellyn and they're working to solve a gruesome murder and uh, it is a little dark because it is it's historical mystery and it's not cozy of any kind and so it does get a little dark but I really enjoyed the ones that I have read and I just really need to get back into it making these videos is going to add so many books to my TBR I'm just letting you know that right now <laughs> so the next one I have is um, the Ruth Galloway series by Ellie Griffith I've not read this series but it is on my pile of I want to start series that I haven't started, but I know a lot of people that I know really enjoy this series. There's quite a few of them that are pretty much caught up on it. So I see this a lot in they finished the book or they're currently reading a book. And every time I see it, I'm like, I want to read this series. There's so many series I want to read. But anyway, this one is about a tart-tongued archaeologist named Ruth Galloway living happily alone in the remote area called Salt Marsh near Northfolk. And um, says a land that was sacred to its Iron Age inhabitants, not quite earth and not quite sea. And so she works alongside, I believe, Detective Chief Inspector Harry Nelson and... I don't know. It just sounds kind of fun because, I mean, she's an archaeologist, so that's not something that you see in a lot of the books and everything, especially when it's mysteries. A lot of times, you know, you are following just like the detectives and things like that. So it's always fun to have a different type of person investigating. That's not just, you know, a cozy mystery. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have um, The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This one is... Uh, about, I think, four uh, senior sleuths. One of them used to be a inspector, but she's retired. And she um, gets cases that nobody else can solve. Like, they're unsolved cases. And she uses them for their Thursday murder club where they discuss them and try to figure out, you know, what happened or whatever. So you can retire the policeman, but... <laughs> Policeman is never retired, I guess, you know. So, and and then they get wrapped up in some other mysteries and everything like that. And so, if you... this, it, I would say this is cozy adjacent. It's not necessarily a cozy mystery, but it is cozy adjacent. A lot of the sleuths in here are not professionals, but we do have... I think her name is Elizabeth, who is the professional. And it doesn't say on the back. But you have the retirement village, you have really fun, kind of quirky characters. But it has a little bit more violence, I think, in it than most cozies would. So I definitely would say it's cozy adjacent. But I think that people who read Cozy Mysteries would probably enjoy it. The last one I have is um, 
This one is for Melissa from Library and Labradors because she loves the Corman Strike series. And this is the second book, I think, The Silkworm. The first book is called The Cuckoo's Calling, but I don't have it, so I'm holding this up in its stead. <laughs> but um, these are some very hefty, hefty uh, mystery books, so you've got to be all in. <laughs> Because they just get bigger as they go. Because I have seen Melissa holding up her books. <laughs> and they are pretty hefty for a mystery. Um, but this is about Corman, Corman Strike, who is a private investigator. And, yeah. That's pretty much all I know. Yeah, so this one is set in um, London. And... I will say that if you want to give these books a try, you're, you're getting in for the long haul. If you're going to read these, you should know that the latest book that came out is like over 900 pages. <laughs> and they're pretty chunky. The, the first one is 456 pages. I'm not sure about this one. This one is 455 pages. So yeah, like they're pretty chunky books. But you know what? So is uh, Elizabeth George's books, so I can't say a whole lot. But, yeah, so just know, you know, if you want to be in for the long haul, got a lot of reading to do. But, uh, yeah, so I don't remember a whole lot about the first book, so when I do decide to conquer this series again, I will have to start all over because I don't remember. I just know that he is a... Uh, kind of a worn torn uh, private detective. He's got, you know, a lot of problems, I think. And a lot of it for, uh, like, Melissa is the, the couple here. Robin is his, I think, secretary. And I think they have, like, this, like, really slow burn romance that she's in there for. <laughs> and everything. Um, but, yeah. So, don't know a whole lot about it. But I'm going to put it on here. And so, yeah, I'm going to stop there because, like I said, there are a lot of British mysteries and everything. And, uh, you know, I mean, you've got Agatha Christie books for sure. Um, but I figured everybody knew that, so why put it on here? <laughs> and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure that there's a lot that I could put on here that I didn't, especially older ones. But, yeah. A lot of these I have actually read, and some of them I am wanting to read, so that's why they're on this list. And so, like with the other video, if you have a favorite British mystery, please leave it down in the comments. I'm always looking for more to add to my TBR, <laughs> and it could be a good recommendation for somebody else. And so, if you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye!